Shalom, all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of the great millstone that rule well through the scriptures, peace to the hopeful elect. This is uh, Hebrews 12 and uh, 5. It says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. All right, and uh, this is actually a quote in the law. All right, this is a precept to the law, Deuteronomy 8 and 5, I believe, which it, uh, we'll grab that real quick. All right, Deuteronomy 8 and 5. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so Yahweh thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Okay? And so um, back in Hebrews, it uh, is going to further expound upon it. As soon as I find it. Okay, here we go. So back in Hebrews 12, verse 6, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, the Most High dealing with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Yeah, fathers chasten their sons because you're instructing them. And when you learn in anything and when you're being brought up in anything, you're going to make mistakes. And depending on how often you make mistakes, and what type of mistakes you make determines what type of chastening you get. It says, but if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, so the elect, all the chosen, all the, everyone who the Lord was dealing with was chastised, all right, in some way, shape, or form. That's why when you read Ecclesiasticus, known as Sirach, the second chapter, it says, but thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Or when you read James the fifth chapter says, take for the prophets as an example for uh, enduring suffering and affliction. You know, it says, but if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, yet all the, the chosen of the Lord are chastised. It says, then are ye bastards and not sons, because who is the ultimate bastard? Esau, Edom, going all the way back to Cain, what the Lord said, the Lord put a mark on Cain that he be not touched. Uh, Genesis 4 and 15 And the Lord said unto him Therefore whosoever slayeth Cain Vengeance shall be taken on him Matter of fact uh, Okay that's cool Genesis 4 and 15 And Yahweh said unto him Therefore whosoever slayeth Cain Vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold And the Lord set a mark upon Cain Lest any finding him should kill him So the Lord uh, set reserved judgment for Cain, a.k.a. Esau, a.k.a. Edom, all right, or currently known as the so-called white men, Europeans, Caucasians, whatever. There's a, 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 a spiritual mark on them that vengeance can't be taken on them yet, all right? All these nations that, uh, all these people that war against them, you try to fight uh, Black Lives Matter, um, uh, the Black Panthers, which that was a sham when you go into the history of it. But Malcolm X, the Muller, the, the Muslims, um, what else you got? Uh, generational wealth, black wealth, all that. There's no way you can fight against this guy because the Lord got a special mark on him because he's reserving him. All right. The scriptures uh, speaks about how the wicked are reserved to judgment. Uh... This is Job 21 and 30, that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. So that's when he going to, uh, you know, get his get justice. That's when justice will be served. All right. Because the scripture says, uh, Proverbs 16 and 4, the Lord created all things for himself, even the wicked for the day of evil. Just like when you watch movies, the bad guy don't don't get his just desserts to the end of the movie, you know getting towards the climax and the resolution all right but uh 
back in Hebrews. But but the underdog, the little guy, what? He catching it. He catching it on all sides, left and right. But those are those are small chastisements. Those are uh small uh things that's building them up for the ultimate thing. All right. If that makes sense. Uh, back in Hebrews 12. And uh, I'll read eight again. But if ye be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. All right. I'm going to jump to 11. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. Right. Your car always breaking down. All right. You always got to work extra overtime. They making mistakes on your check. You ain't got no congruence in your relationship or whatever. You know, those are various forms of chastening. You, you break your ankle, get into a car accident, get a ticket. All right. Now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So if you uh, continue, uh, matter of fact, let me get a couple of scriptures. First uh, Peter 2 and 20. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? All right, so if you make a mistake and you mess up, and then you say, oh, well, I got to be patient now. Well, uh, uh, well you, you darn skippy. Of course you do. It says, but if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with the most high. Because you know why? You're, you're, you're in a position of being innocent. You're in a position of being faultless. All right? Because ultimately the Lord going gonna to justify us to be faultless. All right? It says, it says, to them who he predestined, he justified. To, to whom he justified, he glorified. All right? Jumping up to Romans, the 8th chapter, it says, there is no charge to his elect. All right? Because whatever sins that we committed uh, and whatever, uh, you know, things that we've done, we're, we're hoping that those sins will be purged under the blood of Yahweh And in the process of that, we catch little small uh, inconveniences, which, gonna, which some of them are great inconveniences. We catch great inconveniences, too, of our own doing and innocently. But when you catch them innocently, that's when you, that's when you rejoice. All right? Because, uh, uh, matter of fact, I'll read this next verse. For even hereunto were ye called. Because Mashiach also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Right. That's why um, the apostles um, glory, uh, rejoiced when they when they suffered stripes for the name of the Lord. All right. Because that's uh, that's that's thankworthy, so to speak. All right. But uh, let me see if I have more in that Hebrews. Uh, right, I'll read again, 11. Now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Right. So this is uh, jumping into uh, 2 Ezra 7. All right. There is also another thing, verse 6. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. That's the kingdom of heaven. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left the deep water. And one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. That's why the scripture says, enter ye in the straight gate. Straight mean a position of difficulty. And this right here is describing a position of difficulty. All right. And living righteously in the wicked world, standing up for uh, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, all right, amongst the madness of this present rulership is, is, is tough. It ain't real tough now, but it's going to get tough. It's going to get very hard. It's going to be difficult. And in the process of you doing that, you, 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 catch, uh, you catch hell, so to speak. 
If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. Israel, so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American. This is the way. This is how you, this is how you going, we going to receive what we've been longing for. All right, Deuteronomy, when it speaks about Israel shall dwell in safety alone. All right. None shall make him afraid. Our people are afraid. All right. Our people ain't dwelling in safety alone. There's no assurance of our life in this place. All right. Ain't no generational wealth. Ain't no, no black this and black that going to do nothing. All right. But if we continue in this wisdom and endure all this affliction, then the peaceable fruit of righteousness is going to be yield to us. All right. Ultimately, the kingdom of heaven is going to be given to us. All right, let me jump to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 31. It says, for if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Uh, you know, uh, self-examination. The scripture speaks about a righteous man knoweth when he slip it. All right, so oftentimes you slip and no one catch it because you catch it. And oftentimes you might slip and you ain't caught it in time. All right. And, and someone else catch it. All right. It's a, uh, uh, this is a doctrine of correction and reproof. This is this what the scripture says. All right. The truth is the truth is about reproof and correction. Being perfect. What the, the book of Timothy says that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. All right, let's grab that real quick. I believe it's 2 Timothy 3 and 16. It says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And in the process of perfection, there's going to be imperfections that got to be remedied. All right. It's like when you temper steel or when you when you uh, purify gold, there's a process. It get beat. It get hammered. It get put in the fire. And the more and more and more it happens, the more you take away inconsistencies and the more perfect it become. But before it, before it got perfect, it got beat up. It got beat on. It got welled on. It got corrected. It got chewed out. All right. Back in um, Corinthians. Eleven and. Thirty two. But when we are judged, when you do slip and a judgment may come upon you, it might be, a, you know, you might uh, like me personally, like if I stub my toe and it hurt real bad. One of the things I think about is I'm receiving some judgment from the Lord. All right. But in other cases where you uh, you make an irresponsible decision, because sometimes you, you might do something irresponsible and you might uh, you might get away with it, you know, so to speak. You know, you might get away with a certain irresponsible thing. You might your, your gas might be on E and you might just got to go over here and you'd be like, I'll put some gas in there later. And then other times you might run out of gas and now you got to inconvenience a brother or whoever you know to come get you and handle, get you some gas because of your irresponsi irresponsibility, all right? It says, but when we are judged, when you, when, you, when you pay for your irresponsibilities, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world because it's an eye-opener, all right? It's a, it's a it keep, you on your, uh, keep you on your square. Like, man, I need to tighten up. Ooh, what was I doing? I'm tripping. You know, uh, let me jump to Wisdom of Solomon. 12 and 2. It says, therefore, chastenest thou. I'm going to start at 1. For thine incorruptible spirit is in all things. Therefore, chastenest thou them by. Let me read that over. Therefore, chastenest thou them by little and little that offend. That's talking about the Israelites. All right. So when we offend the Lord. 
he had chastened us little and little, all right? And warn us them by putting them in remembrance wherein they have offended, all right? So when those, uh, oftentimes what happens is something bad happened to you in the spirit, something bad happened to you in the flesh, in the spirit you think about what you did wrong, all right? And then what can you do? Ain't no glory, ain't no glory in taking it patiently when you're being buffeted for your for 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 your wrongdoing. And there's a there's a there's an element of shame that come with that. But what but what happens though? The scripture says uh, a just man falls seven times and get back up again. All right, but the wicked shall fall into uh, mischief or something like that, a condemnation or something like that. All right. And as we uh, get corrected and chastised, you know, you get you get better and better and better and better to the point that the, the, the chastisement don't come as often. All right. It says. Uh, and warn us them by putting them in remembrance when they have offended that leaving their wickedness, they may believe on thee, O Lord. All right. So let's jump to. Rock. I did a word search. I had a few scriptures in mind. Then did a I did a word search on the word mercy, because that's what that's the only thing we got. We got the, you know, as the things coming down in this world and the things that's happening in America, uh, and the the prophecies and the scriptures being fulfilled before our very eyes. We hoping in the mercy of the Lord. All right, we hoping that the Lord show mercy on us. All right. Because that's what you that's all that's all you got. What you gonna do? There's only so much working out you can do. There's only so much so many guns you can buy. There's only so much food you can store up and save. There's only so much stocks you can you can build as much generational wealth as you plan to. But when he says what? Revelation 13, 16, he calls it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a, a Marcus Aurelius. In their hands or their forehands that they can neither buy nor sell, save they had the mark. Then what? Then what? You know? Verse Sirach 47 to 22. But the Lord will never leave off his mercy. All right? Because the I'm, I'm going to say this too. Wrath and mercy come from the Lord. All right? But by, continual, by, by continuing in his righteousness... You got a right to hope in the mercy. All right. Now you, you can hope in mercy by by your effort. All right. When you used to get the report cards, you would get your A's, B's, C's, D's and F's. And then on the other side, you would get your E's, your S's and your U's. The E stand for excellence as far as the effort you put into whatever grade you got. The S stands for satisfactory. Uh, he didn't do his best, but, but what he did do. It will, it will suffice. And then it's the unsatisfactory. All right? The Lord grading us on our effort now. It says, uh, but the Lord will never leave off his mercy. And uh, there's another scripture that says the mercy of the Lord is on all flesh. You know? It says, neither shall any of his works perish. Neither will he abolish the posterity of his elect. Right? Because it's all about the elect. All right. And the seed of him that loveth him, he will not take away. Wherefore, he gave a remnant unto Jacob and out of him a root unto David. All right. Let's grab second Maccabees 10 and 4. It says, uh, when that was done, they fell flat down. And besought the Lord that they might come no more into such troubles. But if they sinned any more against him, that he himself would chasten them with mercy. And that they might not be delivered unto the blasphemous and barbarous nations. Right. So, Lord, you know, chasten us with your mercy. All right. If we if we go off and, and we worthy of punishment, that's cool, you know, but. Do it, do it in uh, with thy mercy's sake, all right? Because your parents, like when you read the when you read the uh, when you read the book of Baruch, it says the Lord didn't put us into uh, 
Let me grab it real quick, and then I'll grab another scripture. Baruch 4, is it 20 some? Oh, 6. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, all right, but because ye moved the Most High to wrath, ye were delivered unto the enemies. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to the Most High. All right? So we, we, we hope to be, and we're being chastened with the Lord's mercy now. All right? Let's grab that real quick. Second Corinthians 4 and 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, that's mercy. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. All right. Uh, what is that? Sirach 2 and I'm going to start at... Uh, 15, they that fear the Lord will not disobey his word, and they that love him will keep his ways. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well, pleasing unto him, and they that love him shall be filled with the law. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight, saying, we will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. Call on Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And with that, Lord willing, this was an edifying lesson to the hopeful elect. Once again, um, double honors to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone that rule well through the scriptures. Shalom. One